Hey guys, welcome to the second in our C Sharp programming tutorials course. Today we're going to be going over some super simple stuff uh, like variables, um, super simple data types like how would I represent uh, numbers in programming, how would I represent text in programming, and some basic uh, logic data types. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and today I'm not drinking Monster, you know, too much of that shit can be dangerous, so. Drinking Amp, which has uh, more caffeine than Monster, so yeah, let's get going. All right, so let's just get right into it. We're going to go to Visual Studio 2017. It's going to open up, navigate to whatever project um, we made in the last video. You guys obviously didn't need to name it Meme. Uh, it should be over here in the recent part of your page. Open that up. All right, so this should look very familiar. This is just where we left off um, from last tutorial. But before we get into um, some stuff we're going to talk about today, I wanted to give you guys some sick tips and tricks, some good IGN guides on how to learn programming. So you don't want to make the mistake that I did when I first started, which was I started with Java, I just watch a bunch of YouTube tutorials and I, I just copy it uh, word for word, line for line, and by like tutorial 30, of like 10 minute tutorials, so I spent a lot of time, I was like, I, I kind of know how to do Java, and then I tried writing my own programs and I had no idea. So. I was just blindly copying what he was doing, whereas I should have been thinking about, um, okay, can I do this on my own? Um, and so I encourage all of you to try all of this out on your own afterwards. Um, replace your variable names with some stupid shit. That's what I used to do. Like if you had uh, variable X, I name it variable, you know, shit. And then, yeah, just fun stuff to help you remember um, remember the things you learn. All right. Speaking of variable names. Michael, what the fuck is a variable? Um, I'm gonna teach you, calm the fuck down. All right, so let's just go ahead and erase all of this shit that we had from last tutorial. We're gonna leave this um, using the system namespace in because system doesn't just hold the console class. It holds a large amount of things that are just completely imperative to programming. So unless you wanna write system in front of like 80% of your lines that you write, we're gonna leave that in. All right, so just delete that. And how about I start teaching you what variables are with a with a number? So how about we use an int data type? Int is just short for integer, so it's just a whole number. We have to tell C Sharp, um, hey, this is the type of data type we want. So we type int in front of it. Now we can say our variable name. We can say num, we can say number, we can call it ass if we want. We can call it int ass, doesn't matter. That's just... Um, how you reference the variable. In math, you might be used to calling it x. So we'll say int x is equal to, and now we say what we want int x um, to be equal to. Yeah, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Let's go with, I don't know, uh, 69. That's depressing. All right, cool. So now we have an integer variable whose value is 69, and its name is uh, x. Um, but it's pretty boring when it just does nothing in our program. It's just sitting out there in the ether. So how about we do something with it? How about we print it to the screen? So using what we learned from last tutorial, we can just do console dot write line. And uh, I'm using the suggested um, things that pop up down here. I'm just hitting enter to make them uh, autocomplete. So if I wanted equals, but we don't. Uh, dot write line. Should get that semicolon in there. And here, I'm gonna actually just write X. And it's gonna say, okay, you want me to print X to the screen. I'm gonna go and look at what the value of X is. It's gonna say, oh, it's 69, so I'm gonna print 69. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so you might be wondering, Michael, why didn't it just print the letter X like it printed out uh, the text hello world in the last tutorial? Well, if you'll recall, we put the uh, words hello world in quotation marks. And that makes it something else entirely. But in this case, we have X, which is the name of a variable whose value is 69. And that's why we print 69 to the screen. If we just wanted to print the letter X, we'd have to put uh, the quotation marks around it, like we did with hello world from the last example. And we can run that. And there you go, prints out X instead. The reason that it's not printing out 69 anymore is because it's not seeing X as this variable name, it's seeing X as a string because we put quotation marks around it. Boom, Michael, what the fuck is a string? A string is a data type just like int, except instead of handling numbers, it handles text. So we're gonna get to strings in a bit, but for now, I just wanna keep doing um, variable examples with uh, an integer type. So we're gonna take off those quotation marks 
and, and now we're printing uh, x again, which has the value 69 for now. But if we want to modify that value, this is why we use variables. It's because we can, we can change around what their values are. So right now, um, x equals 69. But say we want to change um, that value to 100 for some reason. We can come in here, and we can say x. We don't have to type int in front of it because we've already declared it up here. So uh, we can just do x is equal to 100. Get our semicolon, and now when we hit Control F5, it'll print out 100. So when C# -sharp is going through and executing this code, it says, "Okay, a new integer variable. Its name is x, and its uh, value is 69." And it comes down here a little more, and it says, "Okay, x. I recognize that variable. It's an integer. Um, the user wants to change this, the value, to 100 instead. So we just forget the value 69 entirely, and now it's 100." All right, I want to touch on this briefly. We're definitely going to go over it in future episodes more in depth, but you can do mathematic operations in C-sharp. So instead of just assigning x to 100, we can assign x to, say, 20 times 10. And so now x will be equal to the result of this equation, which is just uh, 200. So we run this, and we see x is 200. We print out x. And the same goes for if we wanted to do, say, minus. And you can do all of it, you know, divide, plus. I'm going to show all of them. All right, so now let's talk about string data types. Uh, so string is just you know a fancy word for text. Let's delete that, and now we'll go up here to X and say I, now I want X to hold uh, some text that says hello world or hello memes or hello world. Yeah, hello world. Okay, so we're going to delete 69, and like in the previous tutorial, like I said about quotation marks uh, denote a string. So we have to do quote two quotation marks, and inside we can say what we want, hello world. Now x will hold the value hello world, right? Wrong, we're getting this little red line here, and that's because it's saying I want the integer x to be equal to this string. Well, you can't do that. You can't assign you know, text to a number. That doesn't make sense. So we have to come over here, and we have to change this to string to tell it, hey, I want to make x a string data type. I want to make it a string variable. So we just say string. And now the red lines are gone. And if we print out x here, it's going to say, hey, the value of x is this text up here. And it'll print hello world. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You know, big whoop, Michael. I can store the string hello world in x, and then I can print out x. Why would I ever need to do that? So the reason we would store something in a string variable is maybe we don't know what that string is going to be. So say we want to grab user input. So say we write our program for someone and we ask them, hi, what is your name? Then we can store their answer, like I could say Michael. We could store that answer in x and then we could print out x. And so no matter what their name is, we're always going to print it out. And we're actually going to cover that in next tutorial. It's going to be um, taking input from users, which is a lot of fun. OK, one more um, data type that I want to talk about. So we've covered ints strings, and now we're going to talk about booleans. So despite the weird name, booleans are very, very simple. They can only represent one of two states. It's um, true or false, you know, on or off, uh, one or zero, uh, alive, dead, you know. It, it's very simple. So the way we uh, create a boolean variable, let's just delete all that, and we have to say bool. It's a bool data type. So uh, bool is short for boolean, just like int is short for integer. We can call it uh, whatever name we want. Let's call it Harambe alive is equal to. Now, what do we want to assign it to? Obviously, false, because Harambe is not alive. All right, so we're going to see a little red line under x, obviously, because we deleted the definition for x up here. Uh, now we have the variable Harambe alive, which is set to false. And let's, let's just print that out, Harambe alive. So we're going to do console.writeline Harambe alive, and it's going to print out. OK, so it prints out false. Um, that's a little bit boring for the users, so how about we come in here and we do another console.writeline. Let's do console.writeline, and I'm going to say something like, um, is Harambe alive? Oop, alive, question mark, and add in that semicolon. And then now when we run it, it's going to say, is Harambe alive? That's this print statement right here. And then it's going to print out uh, the variable Harambe alive, which is set to false. All right, so let's talk about what we covered today. Um, we talked about not copying me blindly, because it's nigh impossible to learn programming like that. 
we talked about variables and how to format them. So here we go. It's the type. Then we have the name of our variable. It's whatever we want is equal to a value. And here's an example, you know, just int x is equal to 10. To be completely honest, this line is actually doing two things. So it's doing this. It's declaring the variable integer x. And the second thing, it's setting that value or the variable equal to 10. So if we come over here, uh, here's the example. Integer x is equal to 10. If we took out the value and just had x declared, you see there's no red line because this is valid. We're just declaring that integer x exists um, in the world. It's there. Uh, if we wanted, we can come down here and assign it to 10. And both of these are completely valid. Usually out of good convention, we will assign it to a value at the top, even if that value would be uh, zero if you're not sure what you want to assign it to yet. We covered some simple data types as well. So the first one was int or integer. And as the name implies, it can only be a whole number. Uh, integers are, or ints, are 32 bits by default. All that means is that it can store numbers from negative 2 billion and blah, 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 up to 2 billion and blah, blah, blah. This is because um, 2 to the power 32, as in 32 bits, uh, minus 1 is equal to all the numbers that can be stored between these two numbers. So just to prove that to you, uh, here I have int x assigned to the max value of an integer. Watch what happens when I add just one more to that. There, boom, we get an error because that is out of the bounds of the maximum integer that we can store. We talked about strings for a bit, which just represent text. We're going to get a little bit more into strings and how to format them later. But right now, all you really need to know is that they represent text. So yep, stores text. And make sure not to confuse them with variable names. So let's come over here. Here we have a console.writeLine. So we're just printing to the screen the variable x, which has the value 10. And here, we're printing the string x. These do completely different things, so just make sure to differentiate between them. Finally, we talked about Booleans or bool in C sharp. So a bool or Boolean is simply used to represent true or false, uh, you know, one and zero on off, blah, blah, blah. So why would I use a Boolean if it's so simple, if it can be only one of two values? So here's a simple program I set up to show you guys um, a use case for Booleans. You won't recognize this if um, or this else. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. I just want to show you guys how I would use a Boolean. So say you're making a video game, Ghost of Harambe, uh, where he comes back from the dead and uh, wreaks havoc on all that harmed him. So I set up a Boolean to keep track of Harambe's life. Is he alive or is he dead? You know, those are only two possible states he can have. So I say he is alive, and so when I run the program, it'll print to the screen, Harambe is alive. But then if I give this Boolean the value false, it's just going to print out, he dead. Right there. All right, so that about wraps up C Sharp Tutorials Episode 2. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you join us next time. We're going to be doing grabbing user input and interacting with it, so you can write programs for people who aren't programmers. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll see you there.